I'd like to call a meeting to order. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Thank you. You need a gavel. Yes. So, um, calling a meeting to order at 530, and are there any changes to the uh, agenda? Yes, we need to add treasurer announcements. Okay. So, would uh, the treasurer like to go first? Okay. I just, um, while there are so many people here and on Zoom, wanted to let people know that the state of Vermont set the education uh, tax rates. I um, published them on Front Porch Forum this week, and they're on the town website and Facebook. I have not done a new tax um, calculator that's on the website yet because we don't have a municipal budget that we're going to be voting on. Once uh, the select board sets the new budget we're going to, then I will update that calculator to have both the municipal and the school education tax rates on it, um, but I just don't want to confuse things with an old budget for the municipal. And then um, another announcement sort of from treasurer and the listers is uh, grievances are over the change of appraisal notices to anybody that went through the grievance process were mailed out last Thursday. I don't know with the flood and um, if anybody happen not to receive theirs yet if you did not receive it yet let the listers know um i just want to make sure that everybody receives it because there's only a 14 day window to appeal if you don't agree with the decision that was made and the deadline is july 20th that you have to submit something in writing to me as town clerk so i guess that's clerk not treasurer announcement so is this something you'll be putting on front porch form and on our website too um i can talk to the listers it's it's sort of oh. their area but um i just i'm a little nervous about the flood and the mail and so i just want to make sure that people know to that went through the grievance process to be on the lookout for them okay thank you <clears throat> so before we start um i'd like to read our um rules of procedure a comment by the public or members of the body must be addressed to the chair once they have identified themselves and not to any individual member of the public body or public. Number, members of the public must acknowledge, be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. Members of the public must introduce themselves prior to speaking. And lastly, if a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they may not be recognized again until others have had first been given the opportunity to comment. Members of the public shall be afforded a maximum of two minutes each time they speak on a topic. So tonight we're talking about the budget again. We're hoping to come to some decision and conclusion tonight. And I'd like, just like to read a statement before we start. I have come to realize that the budget the select board presented to the voters in March of 2023 was overreaching and overly ambitious. We knew that with all the new development in the village, revenue would be added because of the grand list would increase. At the same time, we wanted to maintain the same level of services that our community values and needs. However, we didn't do a good job of sharing that information with the members of the public. On town meeting day, the budget was soundly defeated. The select board worked diligently with all the department heads, the financial director, and the town administrator to craft a significantly trimmed budget going from a 28.0% increase to a 12.0% increase. The taxpayers also voted down that budget. Over the past several weeks, the select board worked again with the department heads and the financial director to develop a budget that would better meet the public's expectations and would win their approval. Personally, I believe that when the select board shares more information with the voters about the process we used, and about the estimated increase on the municipal taxes, it can more clearly outline the financial impact on each one of the taxpayers. Therefore, I fully support the budget that the public has in front of them today of a 9.6 increase. I'm going to ask the select board for feedback on the budget. This time I'm going to start with Don. 9.9, I'm sorry, 9.9. 
Good evening, folks. Um, my comments are, I guess, in anticipation of some comments that I would expect tonight, but also in response to many of the comments that we received last week. And it's great to see a, a full house again. We do, we do truly appreciate that because it helps us get the word out. So the first thing I want to talk about is the highway department. And um, it's, of course, on everyone's mind, the storm. And the storm is a budget issue. So I'm just going to talk about that just for a little bit. Today, um, our superintendent of highways, Kevin Barrows, and myself went and visited many of the sites around town that were uh, affected by the, uh, by the storm. It's safe to say from a town municipal standpoint, I know this isn't true of everybody individually, but we probably dodged a big bullet compared to what happened upstream on the Lamoille and what happened downstream on the Lamoille River. So Kevin and I went out to Geltz Road. We looked at uh, we looked at Geltz Road where the where the uh, small stream had overflowed, and uh, there was a beaver dam just down just down below Geltz Road, and that helped to push a lot of water back up on top of Geltz Road, and that explains the closure of that road. The good news is it worked just the way it was supposed to. The the you know the culvert worked well, and the water washed over the top of that road, and there was really very minimal damage, if any damage on Gelts Road. From there, we went over to Stancliffe Road. For those of you that live in that area, you know Stancliffe lost a lane. Um, <laughs> Beavers, had, Beavers had a positive influence on this you know, in a kind of a strange way. Thankfully, one of our residents in that area that owns some land decided a couple of weeks ago to purge a couple of beaver dams and uh, probably save, save much greater damage on Stan, Stancliffe Road. So, um, and that's been and that's been filled in and that road and both lanes are open now from there we went to uh do hamill road which of course is right along the lamoil river at katie's falls which goes up to the do hamill pit and that's probably where the most significant damage was done and when we were there the road crews were out working on on that putting a lot of riprap in and for those of you that know that area um that do hamill road is like right on the edge of the river and again, we can, I think, uh, count our blessings that that road wasn't completely washed out. If you go down there, you can see how high the water got. And it, it's truly amazing that that river wasn't, um, wasn't, or, I'm sorry, that, that road wasn't more affected than it was. Those two, Stancliffe Road and the Duhamel Road, is going to cost us about $30,000. That, in the greater scheme of things, is it's thirty thousand dollars. We're usually talking about much greater amounts of money than that when, than when we're talking about uh, floods. So that's going to be the burden on us as a community. However, it's worth stating now that FEMA and the state will probably reimburse us the vast majority of that. We should expect somewhere in the order of about seventy-five percent from FEMA, and maybe another ten to or more percent from the state. So those two projects are not going to cost us a lot of money. And I, I just want to throw that out there because I, I just want to make sure that, uh, that, that that's not going to impact the budget discussion too much. From there, we went down to the Oxbow. The Oxbow is undoubtedly where the greatest amount of damage occurred that the town is uh, responsible for. There's a tremendous amount of fill down. There's a tremendous amount of gravel down there probably a thousand or several thousand yards of gravel got deposited on there. We did lose a small shed. For some crazy reason, that band shell didn't seem to move. Uh, I'm amazed that the staircase that one of our local contractors built didn't move either. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the water, I guess, was right up. I, I'm, I'm told the water was on the stage, <laughs> barely on the stage, but um, there, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't any damage to it per se. Unfortunately, the community gardens are gone. There were several individuals down there, one woman in particular, very saddened by the loss of her garden. And I'm sure we all feel, uh, we, can, we can all feel equally sad that those people lost all the work and effort and, and money that they put into, uh, into those gardens. But they are gone and the Oxbow is gone for this year. 
it, we probably won't be able to access that area for the rest of the year. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I know Chris is going to talk a little bit more about the Oxbow in a second, in a couple of minutes. But in terms of more specifically about the budget, uh, Judy's talked about this budget that we are presenting tonight. It's a 9.9% budget. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about how we got there from the standpoint of the highway department. So just sticking with the highway theme right now. I'm not going to go through all the cuts and savings, call them what you want prior to the second budget, but it is uh, worth noting that we did find savings and cuts prior to the second budget on the order of $429,000. One of those, which was truly a cut, was the creation of a vacancy in the highway department. So that is still in the budget, and I just wanted to highlight that. But new to this third budget is um, or are the following, which amounts to almost $120,000. Salt prices, uh, salt prices have changed, maybe not considerably, but what has changed is the amount, the, the tonnage that we need to get through next, next winter. So that $44,000 increase you see on that line is due to uh, um, us projecting less need for salt next winter. Wages, we do have one member of our um, highway department that is on disability right now. So those wages have been cut, so has FICA and retirement. It's worth noting too, you know, a lot has been said about the size, size of our highway department. We are down two individuals right now. We have that one vacancy and we also have this one person out on uh, disability. So please keep that in mind. The dump truck, the tandem dump truck, both of those were trucks that we were going to order this year. Like everything else, it seems that's significant in our lives. This supply chain has major delays. If we ordered a truck today, we probably wouldn't see it for eight to 10 months. Uh, we are in the process of ordering it, but we won't need to put that first payment in during this fiscal year. So we removed 25,000 and change for one, one of those vehicles and 25,000 and change for the other. If those trucks come in early, we will be able to wait until fiscal year. Uh, 25 to make those uh, for initial payments. Additionally, uh, Kevin working with his uh, foreman and his department have identified two other pieces of equipment totaling $18,000 $18, and those are Harrow's and a tamper. So those are out as well. So the highway budget new to this third budget has been dropped an additional 100 and eighteen thousand nine hundred and twenty four dollars and uh you know i'd be remiss if i didn't add that up and remind people that that's well that's over seven hundred thousand dollars we've put, we've cut out of the highway department since the initial budget back in back in february so let me just say that again that's a, in in excess of seven hundred thousand dollars we've cut out of this highway department budget so uh you know Thanks goes to uh, Kevin, obviously, and, and members of the highway department. Thanks to Tina as well for working as hard as she has on all of this. And you can imagine the hours that she's put into it. So that is that. Now, I also want to talk about the library. There's been a lot of discussion about the library in the last uh, couple of weeks. There's been a lot of discussion about the library, frankly, since I've been on the board. And uh, we have it's worth noting that we have had several presentations. Arguably, the library has done as good a presentation as any organization in this town has done since I've been on the select board. Very professional uh, presentations, presentations that have included their financial advisor from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. He was here one night. I say that because there's been some question as to whether or not this fund has been mismanaged and I don't believe it's been mismanaged. I think it's just a situation where they're relying on principal 
to gain interest to support their budget, not so much. Don, I just want to make a correction to something that you said, because I just don't want to give people the wrong idea. The savings in the highway department with the wages and FICA were not due to a, um, our employee that's on disability. They were due to some longtime employees that were okay. fairly high up on the sc scale leaving and hiring newer employees that had less experience. And so I went through and redid all that stuff. So that has nothing to do with the one that's out. Because okay. we're still budgeting a full position for that one. We're only budgeting one. We're only freezing one position. Okay. So that's because of new hires. That's right. Okay. And that's my fault. I, no, that's I okay. did I know that. I wanted to make take sure. responsibility for that. Yeah. Uh, so going back to the library, the original request was for $113,350. Um, the library board of trustees has come back to us in the last... Uh, a couple of weeks and they have reduced that request by um, approximately $39,000 and so now that request is on the order of $75,000. I and that $75,000 is the equivalent and you've heard us as select board members re refer to this idea if, uh, uh, in the past, but putting $75,000 towards the library is the equivalent of $34 worth of taxes per year on a half million dollar house. So that's $75,000 is the equivalent of $34 per year on a half million dollar house. I say that because obviously I'm supporting the library and their request. Um, it's $75,000, I know that, and it's there to support their endowment, it's there to support the services that they provide this community, and for those of us that read Front Porch Forum, there's an awful lot of, an awful lot being written right now about exactly what this library does do for this community, and it's a heck of a lot, to put it in simple terms. In 20, 2021, uh, the library received money from the town. In 21-22, we gave them the same amount of money. If we give them the same amount of money this year, we will be level funding them for three years. And that's worth noting. Three years. Three years, they will have received the same. There's no increase there. So I just wanted to highlight that. I wanted to highlight some of what's going on with the highway department. I wanted to highlight what was going on with the library because it's getting so much attention. And I guess I wanted to highlight why I am supporting the highway department budget as it's been presented to you tonight. And also why I'm supporting um, the library budget as it's being presented to me. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to our chief of police, Jason Luno, to come up and talk. In particular, he had to take an emergency call. Well, isn't so? Jason <laughs> is out in the hall taking an emergency call, but when he comes back in, um, Jason want, Jason had a few things that he spoke to us about this week that he wanted to make sure that he got a chance to. Uh, I'm looking at him in the hallway there right now. He's not looking at me. That he wanted to that he wanted to talk about. So when he comes back in, we'll pass the microphone over to him. But I would like to pass it over to Chris for a second. Oh. You want to do oh, Jason, you are, are you ready to give your, is this a good time? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So Jason Luna, our chief of police. So Jason Luna, chief of police. So as most everybody knows, we are requesting uh, additional patrol officer. We are trying to get to where we have two officers on duty, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Right now, about 33% of the day, we only have one patrol officer uh, working. And during that time, if the patrol officer is on another call or has somebody in custody and another emergency comes in, then there's a delayed response. And we have to rely on our mutual aid partners to be the primary response, as well as the officer safety aspect of it. 
you know, the officer's on all by himself and he goes to a call. You never know. Every call is different, but they all pose some type of uh, potential violence. We have to wait on backup from our mutual aid partners, which could be in Johnson, Wolcott, Stowe. They could be busy too. And we're waiting on the state police to come out of Cambridge. And it's been in the past even further towards like Jericho. So um, as we continue to get busier, which is the reason why I feel we need a additional patrol officer. Um, just trying to find some stats here. So over the last three years, our call volume has increased and our arrest have significantly increased. And with that comes a, a portion of some violent crime that's concerning to us and some major um, drug problems. You know, we are seeing people from out of state coming into Morrisville from Detroit, Michigan, Philadelphia, Holyoke, Mass, New York City, Hartford, Connecticut, Springfield, Mass. They set up shop here. We're kind of the hub. I know that's the term has been used before, but it's the same in the drug world. They set up shop here and sell their poison to our residents in our neighboring towns residents. So that kind of trickles down to the street level person who is addicted, you know, that increases our uh, crime rate. So we are seeing, for example, this year, our arrests are up year to date from last year, 32%. And then from 2021 to 2023, we've almost doubled. We're up 96 point, or 96%. So it's a significant increase. Another reason why I feel we need a 10th patrol officer is we are also being taken on extra duties. You know, the animal control officer is ended up in our lap now. And although it doesn't seem like a lot, it, it kind of is. So we are trying to work with somebody that can at least pick dogs up and bring them to the pound. Um, but as far as the enforcement part of things, that kind of lies on our shoulders because in years past, nothing against the folks that did it before. Um, but the big complaint we had from the community was the lack of enforcement on loose dogs, dogs not licensed. So we've kind of came into our arena and we've been starting to enforce some of those issues. Um, and the only, really the only reason I agreed to that was because of this 10th patrol officer, because as you know, we're busy enough as it is. The other reason um, is, and this is something even that's come up recently, is our our detox program here in town has closed. The Lamoille County Mental Health has run it for the last six years and the state got the funding on it. So right now, anytime we get somebody who we have to take in protective custody because of their alcohol use, since they're a danger to themselves or the community, we have to drive them to the St. Johnsbury to the Correctional Center. It's about three hours, there's an hour up, you usually sit there for close to an hour to get somebody booked in and then it's an hour back. We have to call people in on their day off to make that trip up there and we need to do it with two people because there's pretty much no man's land from here to there. So if something wants to go wrong with the person you're transporting, you need to have two officers. So right now we only have a few people to call from who are on days off to do these transports and we're getting to the point where we're really um, working our officers pretty hard. So trying to eliminate burnout. This job is stressful enough as it is. And when we're having officers work six days, you know, working most of their days off, even if it's for four hours, it still it ruins your whole day. So, um, so that's new. And we've gone up there three times in the last 10 days, for an example. Um, arrest warrants. In the past, the sheriff's office has done all those. So if we pick somebody up on an arrest warrant, after court hours, they can't make the bail listed on the warrant, then they go to St. Johnsbury. In the past, the sheriff's office had done those transports. You know, they're kind of facing the same situation as pretty much every law enforcement agency in Vermont and they're short staff. So they said, we can't do those anymore. It comes back on to our responsibility. So now, again, we have the same thing. We have to call two officers out, make the trip to St. Jay. And so I don't have, you know, those come and go. I don't have good numbers on those right now. Uh, but it does happen quite frequently. 
we I mean Morrisville, we all are familiar with Morrisville. We got a hospital that's open 24 hours a day. We got a store that's open 24 hours a day. It's hard for us to limit our service. And what I'm afraid of is we're going to have our off duty officers are going to have to start doing some of these transports or they're going to be tied up on another call. And we're going to have a call come in at, a, at the hospital or somewhere where we're going to need to respond to. We're not going to be able to respond because of the manpower situation that we're facing right now. You know, there's some talk of freezing the position and bringing this up next budget cycle. Uh, I get that. Uh, the problem I have with that is it takes so long to hire a police officer. If I hired one, if I interviewed somebody next week, it would take probably two months to get through the hiring process. And then there's only two police academies a year in Vermont, and they're 16 weeks long. One usually starts in August, and the other one starts in February. So if we hired somebody, like I said, we start the process next week. You know, we're into September till we can actually hire them. They can't go to the full-time academy till February. That goes for 16 weeks, so we're almost a year from now until they can get higher. So if we kick this can down the road, uh, we're going to be you know, looking at 2025 before we can actually have somebody on the streets. And I think that's pretty much all of it. Any want, questions? I, I yes. wanted to, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask, <clears throat> my understanding is that you've had to take up patrol duties recently? Yeah, I'm working a Yes, I'm working a so patrol shift this week. Not only you're you're carrying a TA hat, the town administrator hat, chief of police hat, but you're also starting to do patrol, and you are our emergency coordinator, taking over that position too. So you, you've got a, a heavy load right now, and um, just to add to what's what you've already listed for us. Yeah, because one thing like 24/7, 365, somebody takes a day off for vacation. It's summertime. You know, we got a couple folks going on vacation, and then we got. An officer who was part of the Vermont uh, Army National Guard, you know, they have mandated training one week in a month, two weeks a year type of thing. So he's gone to his AT training, which is two weeks. So, you know, there's times of the year that we're, we're spread thin. And not only myself, my detective, who should be spending his time investigating strictly adult and child sex crimes, he's being pulled off from that to cover road shifts right now, too, from time to time. So, so it's just not myself. We're just kind of team effort. We're all chipping in. Um, is there, yeah. is there um, any talk or possibility of getting another detox center somewhat closer? So that's just that's crazy. It Dr. is. It, no, it is. There is some talk. It hasn't gained any traction yet about trying to combine with um the st john's Bay or derby maybe northeast kingdom services i think their mental health agency is called up there if lamoille county mental health combines with them and then try to put something up in the hardwick way or somewhere in somewhere between here and derby so yeah. i don't know how much closer it will actually be but we're trying to think outside the box a little bit because it's it's a pain to yeah. to drive up there and they have to get back to Morrisville. So we're, you know, we're driving them up there, but then they got to, that's a long ways to get yourself home afterwards. So. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Thank and thanks for your work on the, all the flood. Do you want to go next, Chris? Uh, yep. One of the things that, um, I've been contemplating here for several weeks um, was to try to drill down, down to what the actual cost of savings um, based on the proposals that were made last week at our select board meeting in terms of the library, the rec position, and the police position. Um, if you added up those numbers that were proposed, it was about $250,000 that was proposed to come out of the budget. Um, so what does that really mean in terms of actual dollar savings? And I think that you, if you saw the front porch forum posting that Don and I did today that talked specifically about the library, um, if this library was level funded, you know, on a $300,000 home, you'd save $20.40 on your municipal tax um, cost um, based on new appraised value. 
we'd save forty-seven dollars and sixty cents on a seven hundred thousand dollar home. That's what you want to use card. Okay, so Tony, so, Tony, so, let Chris so, finish, please. So okay. what what this does is it frames Jeez. exactly what you're going to save if you do this, and you know it's your decision as a taxpayer. It's your decision as a voter. Um, what you know these relatively uh, very small costs are to um, do what is proposed with the police position that Jason just spoke about did the same metric so on a three hundred thousand dollar home if you kept that police position cut you'd save twenty dollars and ten cents on municipal tax total you'd save three to thirty three dollars and fifty cents on a half a million dollar home appraised and on a $700,000 home, say $46.90. So again, you know, let's as taxpayers and as residents of this community that are protected by police, uh, serviced by the library, um, let's weigh those numbers in terms of what value these, these positions would bring to the table, uh, to the community, and really exactly what it's going to save um, you on your tax bill. I think that these are big numbers that are being floated around in terms of savings but at the end of the day what it nets down to on your tax bill is negligible in my opinion um, it's for you to decide um, the things that don spoke about particularly in terms of the highway savings and police savings and and such um, what that accrued down to from what tina shared with us is about two hundred seven thousand dollars those are not cuts those are savings, um, and, and, and this is an exercise that every municipality, including Morrisville, goes through at the end of a fiscal year. You go through, you go through each department, you see what's expended, what's not expended, and that always flows down to the bottom line. So whether this budget got, this previous budget got voted down or not, when you get your tax bill, um, uh, following um, which would be in October for November payment these numbers would be reflected in it regardless because this is this is what we do as a municipality is is that we want to make sure that the dollars that we tax for are accurate and reflect only what is needed so these are not cuts these are savings that we would always do at the end of a fiscal year and it would be reflected at the end of the day in your tax bill um, you know with oxbow park i know that there's been some discussion you know what that's going to cost us you know do we tap into the unallocated funds i think there's a lot of ways that we you know, several ways that we can approach that um, because that's that's the major repair in our community right now and I know from my own personal experience, having gone through the flood in 2011, I lost my business, um, two floors of my business and our cars. Um, it was about $400,000 that I had to expend to um, put ourselves back on the map. And um, I thought long and hard because we're right in the heart of, of the village of Waterbury, whether to do that. You know, um, that's a significant amount of money. It takes a long time to pay that back um but you know we were part of a, a business group down there we figured it was a hundred year flood um <laughs> and uh guess what you know you fast forward 12 years that funeral home that um i sold in 2020 got flooded again and they're faced with the same thing what that what it, the purpose of telling that story is is that you know oxbow park that's in a flood zone and it's not an if it's going to flood again, it's a when it's going to flood again. So we need to think really long and hard in terms of how we want to approach the repair down there, what its useful life is, and what its use is um, for, for recreation and what dollars we want to invest in doing that. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing, that we saw during 2011, and we're seeing now throughout Vermont with the flooding that happened um, all around us and, and south of us, there's a significant municipal private uh, cooperation in terms of moving things forward and i would um, say to this board and to the municipality and the, and the construction community if we could somehow 
get you know a day or two's worth of uh, donated equipment and some uh, uh, labor to move gravel off from those fields, um, repurpose it. Um, I was talking with Kevin earlier today, and he can speak to it this, this evening as well. Um, there's a huge hole up by the pump house um, where the water department has. There's thousands of, of uh, cubic yards of material that are missing. We can repurpose the stuff that's on the ball field, um, either as a sub base for the parking lot down here, but more importantly, if we can help uh, Morrisville Water and Light uh, recapture and stabilize their pump house up there, you know, let's do that. We're Vermonters, let's roll up our sleeves and let's work together and see how we can, how we can accomplish this and save everybody some money if we can partner with people in our community. So I just throw that out as a suggestion. Um, I think there's a, uh, several ways that we can accomplish uh, what we need to accomplish down there without spending a lot of money. Hopefully, uh, it's going to be a multi-year process. And we need to decide how we want to fund it and how much we want to fund it. And I think it's going to take some careful uh, planning to do that. We have the skill sets here in the municipality to help guide us through that process, both through with FEMA uh, reimbursements in planning. And uh, I think it's very doable, but I think that's a good place to start. That would just be my suggestion. Would you like to share? Yes. Um, I was asked uh, as liaison uh, to the EMS, um, and I've been talking with them on and on. Um, we since then i've had um quite a few ems reach out to me personally um so what has come out um i'm actually very sad to say uh, we're in danger of losing most of our emts um, they are um, very frustrated uh, and angry um, and part of this comes from last year's uh, process of um, what was completely meant to be a good thing to try to get everyone up to uh, current rates. Um, I do believe that it happened much too quickly, quickly and was not vetted well. And part of um, my argument to that is the EMTs, and I say EMTs, paramedics, there's two different, very distinct uh, group there. Um, the part-time who we depend significantly on, uh, I mean, we have a huge, and we've already lost several, um, were not given any kind of adjustments because they were part-time. So they did not receive any kind of an increase, so they stayed. So the full-times did receive, um, the adjustments of the others, but they were so low already. And I'll give you an example. I we have a full time who's a local, um, loves 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 this town. Grown up, uh, born and raised. Um, he has a degree in biology, national registered paramedic, licensed paramedic. He's a flight paramorbi. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Paramedic. Uh, he it's P A. R A M A R B I B O. Um, it's a special. It's quite a quite an accomplishment to have it. I just can't remember how to pronounce it. Anyway, and he's a critical <coughs> care paramedic. He's been highly recognized. Um, in 2021, this very select board recognized him for um, saving a baby uh, out in the field. Um, he was. Um, at $23 an hour. Um, his annual salary is, 40, uh, is basically $47,000. Um, starting, and I have a whole list of other paramedics, um, and this is just basic EMTs, this is not paramedics with his credentials, are starting at $26 to $32 an hour. Um, some places pay $150 additional for transports um and part of his concern is the way this program is currently set up is that everybody gets the same raise every year so there's no incentives to improve your uh credentials and so 
he's very, very frustrated in the fact that he has worked very hard. He's incredibly viable. Um, he can teach, he can do so many other things, and yet he's going to receive the same increase as an EMT. Um, and for him, that's very frustrating, and he's not the only one I've heard this from. Um, and again, this is, you know, not only are they vital to this community, they are one of our few revenue generating um, components of the whole town. They're, um, so we're also, we have contracts uh, and we're looking at them and working, um, but we have contractual obligations um, for uh, Elmore and other places. There's mutual aid agreement throughout. And again, part of the problem is, is that they are overseen by the town. So everything they do um, has to come before the select board. And they are now competing with many private agencies who are driving the market. Um, but it's also very frustrating to them that they are generating money. And then it goes into the general fund. And then they have to come beg for an, an ambulance and they have to come beg. They, for um, three years, they have been trying to get a kitchen and their kitchen is just dismal. I mean, I walked in there and was horrified that, you know, these are people that are spending 12 hour days in there and don't have a dishwasher, you know? And so I, I am I'm just really behind them and really afraid because uh, yes, I'm aging and I'm going to need them. And I wanna know that this person will show up at my door to save me. Um, and if we don't take care of these folks and get this these this money up, and um, you know we'll lose revenue in town, um, we will lose our paramedics, and so knowing that that's what's coming, you know. And again, with the compounded, the divide is only going to get worse and worse. And it's there's resentment in the department, which is you know not good for anybody. We need them all to work together. Um, and, you know, if anybody, I would encourage you to go walk through an ambulance. They are mobile hospitals. I mean, it's absolutely amazing though, some of the equipment and, you know, they have a, an IV that, you know, can go right into your heart and can save your life. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's, they would tell me it's like $140. Um, and there's one IV that's just the normal. It's $10, $15. And unfortunately, the insurance companies reimburse at the same rate. So there's bigger problems with the insurance companies and stuff, um, so, you know, expense wise. But they they also spoke about how they would really like to have a fund set up, just like we have a buildings fund, um, where a certain amount of money that they generate would go into this fund, and they just loosely threw out a sixty thousand dollars that it sits. So that when they need an ambulance or they need and it would and they were very clear it would not go to salaries, um, but it would go to uh, ambulances equipment um, so that they have some kind of control over the money they're generating and and aren't put in a position of begging. Um, and I understand that that's something we would have to make a motion to do um, and we can't do it yet, but I, I just i'm putting that out there that that's what's coming. Um, and seeing that, um, you know, I, I mean, I have huge concerns. Um, I'm absolutely in favor for the police officer. I always have been, um, you know, both of these services serve all 5,600 people. Um, these are essential basic services, um, which I do believe all the town people need. Um, and I love the library and I greatly appreciate you guys uh, working with us, I do, um, and you know, again, um, it comes down to, you know, we're in dire, dire situations um, coming out of the pandemic with the inflation, uh, and now flood. I mean, people have lost their homes. Um, Todd is out every day, <coughs> unfortunately, condemning houses. Um, this is going to have a huge, huge effect on everybody. Um, I don't, you know, this is just not the time to spend any kind of extra discretionary 
I also think looking at this plan that that and this is part of my um you know and i don't want to say price freeze but just holding off on any new hires or any um upgrades until we can and i firmly believe we need to get someone here in here to do a comprehensive study of all of our departments and see where we are and get it and i think there needs to be some restructuring done i think some of these positions were put into place back in 2003, 2004. We're a very different town. And it's not to eliminate positions. I'm not saying that. But I think we need to restructure. And I, you know, one of the things I throw out is that we have all these individual people. And maybe it's time to start thinking in terms of we need possibly a park and recs department as opposed to individuals doing crisscross. And I think now is the time to really take the time to look at it and get a plan going forward um, that makes more sense. And there's just one here, one here is not a um, proactive way to go, I think. Um, and so that's why I keep saying is, I would uh, um, appreciate that if we could, and I get emails all the time just slowing down. <clears throat> and yes, we need to look at, um, generating more income uh, revenue for the town but that's you know we're talking about grants and we're not you know two thousand dollar five thousand dollar we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars because we need um <clears throat> we need a, uh, a public safety building that's very obvious very potentially we need a rec building so that we could facilitate all of uh you know going forward um, that's going to take somebody who's got some very serious skills um, and you know that might be a contractor but that's how I think this town is going to move forward and uh, so I it's not that I'm against anything I'm not but I just want to get us on a solid path going forward um, to where um, we're not just whoever's the loudest gets the money and this person and that because that's what I feel like is uh, we it's time that we look at really big picture and just catch our breaths. I mean, we're going into a very bad time. I mean, it's may flood again tonight. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm in the ag business. Um, you know, the farms, almost, I mean, luckily my farmers at the farmer's market are okay, but um, all the farmers from Hardwick and Montpelier are gone. That's an enormous amount of food. And what happens when we lose our farmers? food prices go up <laughs> and you know again I don't want to be the pessimist but when I'm hearing it's only going to be $40 well if you talk to somebody who makes $15 an hour after taxes they're making 11 so they've got to work basically three to four hours for that $40 and that's only one segment so you start adding 40 here 60 here all of a sudden and we're already one of the highest tax counties in the state um, from years. And so I, I, there's portions of this I'll support and, but as an overall, I, I don't support it. I think it's too high. Thank you, Laura. I wanted to mention that the, um, in the, in the budget for, uh, our volunteers, our volunteer fire, uh, I'm going to say firemen. Do we have any fire women? Do we have any women on the fire department? <laughs> All right. So the fire department volunteers and the EMS volunteers are currently making three dollars an hour. No, wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. You're wrong for us. Okay. What is it? We are paid by stipends, depending on what you do. Come on, you have to come up because the people in the home can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then introduce. Okay, introduce yourself, please. Dennis DiGregorio, fire chief and taxpayer. People need to know the facts before they start talking. Okay. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm supposed to address it to you. All right. You want to look at percentages with the problems that we just talked about? Look at one and two. Then you want to talk about internal issues. It's not my section. We get paid by stipends. Okay. We're supposed to go back by the hour because when Dan was here, me and Sean spent two years because we couldn't get paid by the hour. Couldn't get any more money. 
we were at 1250. I'm the highest paid person. My budget shows line item exactly what each person makes. There is no hitting percentages. I make think 9,000 a year. Divide that if I made everything in this year by 400 hours. And that'll tell you what I make an hour. So what about your volunteers? Do you have any idea what the same? They we make? all firefighters are down to 35, 4,000 a year. I'm the highest paid person on the department. For me, it goes down. Okay, but I thought there was there was going to be an increase for the volunteers. So you weren't the fire department by the wasn't, hour. By the hour, we were going to be increasing. Okay, depending on the amount of calls. Okay. I can't predict how many hours we're going to spend. The other night we had 11 and a half hours out helping the town with the rest of right. the people. You know, all the departments are out. It went great, but it's long. Right. We were told we can't go by stipends anymore. Funny how the world works. So we had to go back to buy the hour. I was not having my people get a decrease. Right. So I met with Eric, Tina, me, Jason. We worked on different numbers. We brought in different platforms and we came up with the hourly wages that are presented in this year's budget. Okay. How that's gonna work, I don't know. We could have 10 calls in a month. Right. We could have 24 calls in a month. We could have 24 calls that are four of them or 10 hours. We don't know. But currently, because the budget hasn't been voted on, that increase hasn't happened yet. No, because that's where I've finally got the information, just like with DMS volunteers. My question is to the board, we weren't covered under the non-union policy then. So we're staying at last year's budget while others are going to this year's budget. Yes. You think about that. That's yes. Neither here nor there, but my guys just wanted to know. Yes. You can't do what we do for the money. And it's just like with that budget was figured for 25 people. I just picked up two last night. And I'm probably going to pick up a third in June. So that's a good number to start. Our roll call roster is 40 people. And unless the board tells me to refuse people, I will interview everybody that wants an application. You know, so the budget, I take pride in my budget. This year I went over the first time since I've been chief because I pay taxes in Morrisville and we don't buy stupid stuff. We have an association that on two items spent over $12,000 for the town. I am working on getting a list. You know, they'll tell me the town buys one, we'll buy one. They bought a $4,800 Ram fan and a $5,500 imager. That's just two of the many things we buy because we have a good little money maker. So it goes back into the town. But we don't usually broadcast that. We know it. You know, I mean, for the most part, I've never had to talk to the town except when I got the Quint, the new ladder. And the reason I had to talk to different groups was they wanted to know what a Quint was. And when I told them, they go, oh, it's a no brainer. We were eight to one in favor of a $650,000 truck to replace two. I mean, I don't know, but as far as that budget right now that is cut the second time 
I just hope next year, if this does pass, we have no problems because it'll have to be a budget's a rough estimate. Yes. You know, I mean, we just spent 12,000 on a head for a 2003 engine. Unexpected. You know, we lost number six, you know, at a fire. So, I mean, that's an unexpected expense that hopefully we don't have to keep doing that. You know, because next year I'm going to put in for a truck or attempt to replace the 2003. You know, I, I live here. I'm very careful with that budget. I do listen. Problem is I know too much. <laughs> and that's why I sit in the back and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> because I am a department head, but sometimes I get irritated and I have to talk as a town's person, you know? So that's best I can tell you is well, right now we're on stipends. Yeah. If you look at last year's budget, it'll show you exactly what they make per year. And last year, I think me and Jason figured it out. It was close to 400 hours. So divide whatever number for probies, firefighters, senior firefighters, captains, lieutenants, chiefs, divided by 400 and that's what we made an hour. I think I was, I want to think 17 maybe. I, I don't, we, we don't do it for the money. No, but I appreciate so much you, you know, clearing that up. But. I have no problem if anybody has any questions with that, even if they want to follow me out the door, <laughs> you know, there's nothing hid. It's there. Yeah. So, thank you. Dan. Anything else? No, thank you. Dennis. No, hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm glad. Denny um, cleared that up, but I know that our EMS volunteers are only making $3 an hour right now until the budget passes, and then it'll be up to 15. The reason that they're making so little is because to be a volunteer, you have to make what they call a nominal amount per hour. That nominal amount is $3. This budget is a movement to make them part-time employees without benefits so we can pay them $15 an hour so we can attract more people and keep the people we have. So we're moving away from the volunteer status to part-time employees with no benefits. That's one of the reasons that this budget has increased. Okay. Paula, did you go? Human Resources Director Paula Beatty. Um, I just wanted to make a correction um, to the wages that you were speaking of. The part time, uh, all part time, sorry, all part time employees um, receive the CPIW. Um, full time people receive, employees receive the CPIW and a step. So when they're saying that they did not receive anything, those part time employees did receive the 8.7, like the full time employees did. So they, that's what they told me. So. And um, it was a couple of months ago, I, I did a data, a data analysis on the wages across the state of Vermont and the municipalities. So what you're saying basically supports um, the information that I was providing back then. And that is that we have a number of positions that are underpaid. Um, and they're EMS is one of those. Um, and when you talk about their kitchen, they need a kitchen. But Jason, go walk through the police department. Um, it's not just the EMS. So we're sitting here talking about cutting the budget, but you're talking about a rec building and you're talking about a kitchen. So we can't do those things because there's other things that need to be provided. But I'm saying that we need to anticipate them coming. Oh, oh don't run away. Yeah. Got a question for oh. you? So, Paula. Um, there's been um, discussion, as you're aware of, over the last couple of meetings about doing um, some sort of forensic study on wages to make see if Morristown is in line. And I know yeah. that several months ago, for the previous budget, you had done work with the LCT 
based on similar towns and such. Um, we spoke about this again this week. Yes. Um, you know, in your estimate, if we were to contract that type of study, what would this municipality be looking at in terms of investment of dollars um, to spend to get that information? I, I think you're probably looking at anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars. I'm actually going to reach out to another town that just went through that process to get some data from them. Um, to see how much it did in fact cost them um, even going to ask if they would be willing to share that information and see if we could potentially if they would be willing to even um, negotiate letting us buy that data to see what that would be because in fact it would be you know return revenue for them but w it would be very expensive so i'm going to as you and i talked about chris i'm going to take the VLCT data um, and drill down even more than we did last time. It was um, a quick and dirty, if you will, of trying to you know, get that project done um, so that the information could be presented for those budget meetings. But there's another layer that I can do. I just didn't have the time. And, and I think I shared that at that meeting. I just didn't have the time. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that I can start that in the next couple of weeks. I just my plate is is full, um, but I think that you're going to see, as Laura just spoke to, I think you're going to find that it's not just the EMS staff that's underpaid. Um, I think the most recent 8.7 increase with this step had a really positive impact on the town of Morristown's. Um, salary and pay scale becoming in line um, but it took that for it to be without that we would be even worse off um you know the ems staff i, I feel for them i feel for the fire department they didn't get an 8.7 increase as denny just spoke to they're still getting paid what they were paid in last year's budget um, so that's the impact of all of this it's unfortunate i'm a morristown taxpayer as well and i will pay the additional money for the full-time rack i'll pay the additional money to fund the library that i want those services in the community that i live in I guess I just follow that up with, um, you know, Paula as a as a human resources director has this skill set to be able to do this kind of data mining and to bring that to the board for the not this fiscal year that we're in right now, but the next one where it becomes more germane in terms mm -hmm. of negotiations and 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 taking a look at how we want to approach this. Um, and I just I want to thank you, first of all, for all the work that you do, but also um, we have that skill set right here under this roof. And uh, that's an important commodity. And I think that, um, you know, rather than to spend $15,000 or whatever that may be on an independent study, we have that skill set right here. I think I'm very capable of doing that. I've done it in the nonprofit sector. I've done it for the profit sector. Right. I had to create these um, these wages for um organizations to make a profit i can do it here um and i want to do it here it's for the people that i work with it's for my community um and i get paid to do it and i love what i do so i'm up for the challenge thanks Paul. Yeah, it's worth noting that two of us up here at the table met with met with some officials from hyde park today and they would reiterate exactly what you said in fact, their guess was ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending upon what you ask for. And the more you ask for, the price is going to go up from there. So, ten is probably the least. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I would say that I know Richmond um, just did it, and again, it's you know, and why I I think a third party is important because there's non-bias. Not that I'm accusing you of bias, but they also it's a. Um, much more in depth study instead of just salaries there's you know economic there's there's a there's a lot more to i think what these companies do uh essex is in the um, um in the process of doing it and you know you do it once and it gives you a a, a great view of how the how to go forward how the town is uh, doing um and again, these, this is what they do. So they can come and do it in a very short period of time. 
Um, you know, I greatly appreciate Paula, and I think again she's managing a lot. And um, so, you know, I do recommend hiring a, a third party because I think we all could learn some very interesting things. And that's my feeling. I think this is that this is a that's really another conversation. good yes thank you good conversation for another agenda. Yes. Um, does anybody have any questions? Are, are, Oops. Yeah, just, can I say one more thing? You may. And then this will be short. This is a question for Tina. But the budget, actually, I just want to say when I thank Tina for her hard work, I left Stacy out of it. Thank you very much. Stacy's working with Tina in finance, so. <laughs> Um, you don't get the recognition that you deserve. We always we always <laughs> give it to Tina. Yes. Uh, but the budget that we've presented that the finance uh, department has thrown thrown out there tonight is nine point nine percent. That does or does not include the benefit that we would see from the increase in the grand list. It does not. This is simply comparing last year's budget to this year's budget. It has nothing to do with grand list. And the grand list, we can probably expect, we talked about this a lot before, the second budget is somewhere in the order of about a 2% benefit. That's what they had anticipated, yes. Is that so still with the reappraisal? I, I don't know. I have okay. no idea what that is, but. So it wouldn't be unrealistic to at all. over the last five years from the endowment. That is not keeping pace with the growth on the endowment. Our endowment doesn't operate like a retirement account. We don't have a target date where we can spend all this money and then it's gone and that's okay because we're gone too. We have to save this money for everyone forever. And some of the proposals that are floating out on Front Porch Forum and in other debates really neglect to look at the numbers. If we spent the endowment to fund the library, we'd run out of money in three years. And then guess what? We hit the cliff and taxpayers pay 100%. If we take more from the endowment over time, we actually lose our income from the endowment. So our endowment has three components, principal, interest, and income. We base our annual spending, the severe endowment policy, on the income. That's dividends and payout from certain held accounts. And so I'm winded, not up emotional because I am very pregnant. <laughs> um, <sighs> so the income out is what we base our withdrawals on. That income is jeopardized if we sell stocks to make up for extra money that's needed. What we had brought to the town's attention approximately a year and a half to two years ago was that warning lights were going off. We had limited time left to flag this issue and steer the ship on the right course to fix what we needed to be appropriately spending from the endowment and adopt an endowment policy to secure that we're still funding from the endowment a substantially larger chunk of our town's public free library for our folks that live here if you compare on a per capita basis how much people spend for their libraries and that's how the department of libraries in vermont measures it and i'm not going to get into comparing the numbers that we heard tonight. They're both accurate. It's just their measurements of different things. Morristown has been charging between $33 in 2021 per capita to use our free public library via the tax appropriation to what we're requesting now, which is $47.91 per person. I understand that's not the experience of each individual. I'm just explaining if we looked at our residents based on the 2020 census, that's what our appropriation is requiring. I told this board last week, what does that $48 mean for the mom who doesn't have childcare otherwise? I certainly propose you can't get it for that much money for one day. And you're getting it all year long. And you're getting it because of the figure I told you last time as well, that in 2022, we have the number one library out of 183 libraries in the state of Vermont providing programs, the no total number of programs to the patrons in this town. When we stack up against Stowe, Waterbury, Rockingham, all towns of our size, they're charging their per capita residents, or residents on a per capita basis, twice as much, sometimes more. Other libraries that stack up at our size are still charging that amount two years ago, $50 per capita. So our endowment's providing a substantial discount for the value that the taxpayers receive. The consequences of reaching that cliff where we can no longer fund the library through these alternative sources 
are that the library becomes municipal because we can't afford to fund it the way we've been funding it. What does that mean? It doesn't just mean the endowment's gone. It means all of our employees become town employees and the debates we're having about that come into play. It means that the services that we contract out as a nonprofit become municipal services after we provided on the contracts, rates, and RFPs the town uses. Sometimes that means savings. We actually benefit from those luckily right now, but it also means cost increases. And we can quantify those consequences. It means those numbers go far higher. I also would suggest that when you look at this number on the sheet that tells you you could save $40 this year, think about how much costs aren't embedded in that. Think about the children that don't have a place to go after school that instead get involved in what the chief was talking about earlier. Think about the costs to the parents who can't afford childcare and have to drop out of their employment or become part-time. These things have ripple effects in our economy and our library is providing a litany of services at the point of service that are free for everyone. It's democratic, it's universal. There's a lot of other great things I wanna say about the library and I hope you'll give me the time to say them. It's more about just books and banks of computers. It's a magical place where individuals gather to explore, interact, and imagine. Our library helps users navigate life challenges like finding a job, studying for exam, or applying to school. They preserve historic artifacts that are meaningful to our community. They conduct outreach to homebound, disabled, and elderly members of our community, and they connect the disadvantaged with social services, the internet, and resources that they badly need to survive day to day. They offer free tutoring, literacy support, homework help, and summer reading programs for kids and teens to help bridge the economic divide that impacts students' academic performance, particularly due to the lag that has been experienced due to COVID. If you have not been to our library in a while, or you've not brought your child or grandchild, come see us. Sign up or drop in for a program, walk around the grounds or inside to see how much is going on and how many of our community members gather there because it's an invaluable resource. Let us show you what the library can do to enrich your life and our community firsthand. I wanna tell you that our library is bringing in thousands of members of the community and is achieving at a level that far exceeds our reliance on taxpayer money. So if you would like more information, come on down. We'll be happy to provide it. We'd love to see you. We want everyone to love our library like we do. Thank you. <laughs> Did you want to? Did you want to speak to him? Okay. No, uh, okay. Tony's coming. That's okay. Sorry, Pat. Um, one second. Just so you know, GM TV's internet is down, so we're still zooming, but the recording isn't happening. We're trying to record on Zoom, and hopefully, we can piece it together tomorrow. But just okay. so everybody knows. Thank you. Uh, Tony Cody Cody Hill, taxpayer of Morristown. Thank you, Kevin, for grading my road today. It really needed it. Thank you. This is agony of defeat for me. I have been defeated mostly by you three right here. And I'm very heartbroken that that this board does not listen to anybody, any, anything. I've been coming here almost two years and you, and you, and nobody listens to nobody. Okay. I'm talking here. Okay. And you probably don't got to worry about me coming again, Judy. Okay. I asked for your resignation two weeks ago. Okay. But maybe I'm the one that should resign. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to take 999 voters with me, and the results are going to be no on this budget. You're not going to pass this budget. Thank you. Great. Steph, you want to go ahead. I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm Pat Michelson. Um, first, I want to say that I think in the past, the town tried to save money. They kept passing budgets and pass. I'm sorry, thank you. Passing budgets, it's not working now. And so to give you, I'm really here more to say, I moved here because it was a community. 
I moved here because I had a great library program. I moved here because of recreation, and I'm here to talk about Anna McCormick. I don't know if you guys know or not, but that summer camp program is really a fancy way, fancy name, to feed kids breakfast and lunch when there's no school. She told you that she could write grants. I've worked in urban renewal. I'll help her do do research. I was a research assistant in grad school and undergrad. There's a way to do this, guys. Judy, you know, <laughs> I've been begging for a sidewalk for how long? So there is a way, if, and I don't have the total. I, don't, I can't get, there's a new guy and I can't get a hold of him. But the town can do in kind if the job is small enough. So if we looked at it and we planned ahead and we picked of course, my street that you took my sidewalks, but you pick, you know, the really busy roads, we might get something done instead of scattering everything all over the place. And, and I think, you know, maybe even canvassing and knocking on doors and asking people what's important to you. I did that. I mean, we tore down, it was outside Philly. I worked on this big project where they tore down an old housing development and move senior citizens. But we ask the people first, what's the most important to you? Because everybody comes, I want sidewalks. I'm not the only one who wants sidewalks. So, somebody else wants potholes fixed. And damn it, you guys need it more than anybody. And it's, if we all pull together and we really used Anna McCormick, because she writes grants, she could probably find us a lot of money. And that's when I, that's what I'm, I'm here to say, I'm a social worker and I'm all about everybody getting along. And I'm tired of the infighting on the board. And you shouldn't have blocked her. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Um, but I, it was in the newspaper that you blocked, you abstained a vote. I just wanted to say this because- Come up to the microphone, please. It keeps it going. Microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. It was in the paper that you were up for a vote. You abstain the vote. This keeps it going. And then Judy doesn't get the position. And we've got to stop it. And the two new people that came, I'm sure they came with good intentions, but you don't get everything that you want. And that's all I want to say. And thank you for your service. Let me clarify some things. Um, first of all, any child can have lunch Monday through Friday at the Moores uh, Town Elementary. That's not the point. That's a, that's wait, excuse me. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Please. I'm going to go back and forth. So no child is, de is denied lunch here. No one has ever talked about discontinuing the summer program, ever. So, uh, you know, that's the, the question is, and it's not if, it's just when to, con to continue it. That's all. And please, well, allow me, I'm a, I am an elected official. and. Um, I did abstain because I, in good conscience, um, could not recommend for lots of reasons and from talking to people. That is what I'm elected to do. And I'm sorry that you see it as um, uh, retroactive, but as I have said, there was an expectation that we're all supposed to go along. And the problem I have said all along is that it's always go along with everybody else and no one not listening to me. And I feel that I was elected to for change and to make change. And I'm not here to be rubber stamp and to go along. So I'll be up for vote and you cannot vote for me. I didn't say, I didn't say. Yes, that's, yes Okay, I really want to be clear here because you weren't not, listening to what I was saying. I said that it was a federal program for kids to have breakfast and lunch. I said that Anna McCormick offered you services. If you gave her, if you kept the, whoever made the, gave her their word that she was going to have a full-time job, give her the job and let her write grants and let's get some things done. You know, and I, I'm personally, like I'm seeing uh, petitions for a town manager. Nobody even wants to be the administrator. You're never going to get a manager and it's going to cost 150,000 if you're lucky. Because I've worked on those projects. And so I, it's just like we got to stop this.
nickel and diming and fighting with one and over uh, each other over over silly things. Well, my tax Thank you, Pat. Tony, 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 like to Tony, Tony. Hold on one second, please. Um, I want to just make sure. I have a hand up. I, I want to take the Zoom person. Sure, I'll wait. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can't see you Trisha. on Zoom. Is that Tricia? Go ahead. It is. Uh, thank you for letting me speak about this. I had started with the town like 12 years ago as a part-time employee like Anna did at 24 hours a week. I I don't know how many people know like I like to stand in the background of the town. I like to make things happen. I like to make things uh, grow. You know, I've created uh, many, many art projects in the town. But I want to tell everyone to poor Anna. You know, we've been talking about a rec position for 10 years. And, you know, we're thinking around about $25,000 of salary for Anna. You know, we need rec. Guys, we this is our community. This is our health. This is our 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 community all together. You know, uh, we th think about this. Uh, Stowe has had rec for years and years and years. Uh, Waterbury has had rec for years and years and years. We have never even had a rec position in our town. We had a rec committee, yes, sort of half on and off, on and off, and this, and that, and the other. But guys, when you're thinking about voting for this budget, please vote this rec position in. This is crazy not to. I mean, she Anna is phenomenal for our town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen Conley. I'm speaking tonight as a parent of a middle school age child. Um, a parent volunteer for our skate part or skating rink that is now gone as well as all of our ice skates that are now gone into the river um, and i'm also speaking as an active engaged citizen who sits on one of our boards as a conservation conservation commission commission vice chair um, i want to speak on behalf of parks and rec um, and give a little bit of historic knowledge um, from the past few years, and then also speak um, in support of the library and the amazing work that they do. So first, I just want to remind everyone that without a park or a rec coordinator, that we had no summer program for our kids following the pandemic, um, which was shameful. Um, when parents needed to get back to work, we had nowhere for our kids to go. Um, we need to remember that the jobs that people are doing, they're important um, for young families. I'm not super young, but I am young enough to know that without the support of my community, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so then our library, which I went to today, and in the children's room, which was the only room that I went into, there were um, 18 people, two employees, and um, I think it was six kids, all greeted by name and smiling, safe, not roaming around the streets. They were protected and cared for, right? They were given factors that will encourage them to not be a problem and a drain on our resources, right? We all know these things. Um, so we need to vote for them. We need to fund our town. We need sidewalks we can walk on and roll on if we can't walk, right? That our school, you couldn't get to our school in a wheelchair is ridiculous. Hopefully that will be fixed this summer, right? That's not for right now, but we can't just keep expecting things to happen on volunteers' backs. We need employees that can expect a paycheck that can save us. It's ridiculous. You know, like I feel for people whose homes are at risk. And I hope that my life will also be supported. We need to, this is a very reasonable budget at this point, we need to pass it. Please support it. Thank you all for the work that you've done. I do not want you to feel attacked by the many people in this room because you're volunteers. <laughs> you know, like you get like so little money to be here and 
for three hours of your time every other week? This is ridiculous. Like you guys, thank you. Thank you, twice a week, I'm sorry. I haven't been coming because I've been like, people care more about this than I do. I care. <laughs> so I'm here <laughs> and thank everybody for being here too. Okay, and Judy, you do a lovely job. You are definitely a professional and you, it shows in your work. Thank you. You deserve your salary as well as everyone else. Thank you, but because you are attractive. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kara Hansi. I'm a resident of Morristown. I, a little bit louder, Kara Hansi, resident of Morristown. So Kara, one thing, yeah, the microphone only goes to the um, audience. Zoom. Yeah. Good. Um, so um, thank you for letting me speak and inviting me to be here today. Um, I reached out to the board to support the full-time rec position. Um, and I'll speak to that in a second. I just also want to thank all the efforts um, as a Morrisville resident, everyone who has been amazing at supplying water to all of us has been just phenomenal. So thank you for, um, for doing all that. Um, I'm here to speak as a parent as well. I have um, one going into high school, middle school, and elementary school next year. So we'll be everywhere. Um, I'm also a parent um, in the PAPA ML advisory board um, that's supporting the principals who are doing the good work to try to create a wonderful environment for our children. I'm also a professional in the health and wellness field. I have worked with um, Morrisville Rec in the past. I've, um, I'm a lifeguard instructor. I've certified uh, many um, people's children in this room. I've also taught many kids how to swim in my own personal business. Um, I worked as the coordinator of the SHAPE facility at Johnson for four years in a part-time position. So what I really wanna speak to is what happens differently when you are part-time than when you are full-time. And I think that's a really, really important distinction in this conversation. Um, and I also wanna speak to how we need to use the word and more and not put butts against each other and against everything that we're working towards here in this community. So um, part-time work is really hard. You feel slightly unvalued with the work that you're doing. Um, I've left many jobs um, that I worked part-time because I need to support my family. I have a wonderful job at UVM. Um, that I'm fortunate enough to be able to commute to a couple times a week, also work from home. I continue to support community programs by renting the pool at Johnson and offering a swim team for local, um, local swimmers in all of Lamoille County. Um, and so, but all of this work takes time and effort and a lot of the conversations I'm hearing about all the positions um, that are being spoken of, all of the jobs that everybody is doing in here is about valuing valuing the work that is getting done and valuing them as people in our communities and i think that that needs to be strongly considered um and i hope that the voters are hearing the conversations i've been um you know not everybody is on zoom and in this room many of us watch when we have time because it takes time to be civically involved and so i think the conversations that we're all having here are really important it's important to hear every voice in our community and i would love to hear Anne's. i want to talk about a rec facility yes and a full-time rec position on this on this um um, budget and voted yes for that and the library and the fire department and I know that those things come at a cost and the police department, um, but we need to keep having the conversation and not kick the can down the road and do it later. Um, so part time work is really hard and I worry that we'll lose really good amazing people in our town, because we keep them where they're at and not value the work that they're doing um, with our tax money. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Julia. Um, I promised someone else. I'm sorry. You'll, you'll be next. Hi, Evelyn Throne, Mars Phil. Um, I think that something from a personal perspective that affects my thoughts about the library and about the rec position and the rec department itself. I understand people's attitudes, and people have expressed it that people you know it begins at home and you have to take care of your children at home and you have to do the basics at home and i do understand that and as a very young mother almost 50 years ago so it was i was a very young mother i did i did everything that i could at home 
I went to the library. That was my main thing. I went to the library. We got 10 books out because we could get two library cards. We got 20 books at a time out and we brought them home because I didn't have a safe place outside to hang out with my kids. Sometimes we, they sat in the dirt and played matchbox cards with the other kids, but you know, we had that. And when we had enough time, she got, my daughter got a place at the YMCA through a scholarship. And she could do that. And the rec department, she could go there. I, I wasn't advocating my responsibilities in any way, shape, or form by valuing and taking advantage of these important programs. And it would break my heart to lose somebody like Anna because we haven't fulfilled, A, fulfilled our promises to her, whether it was written or whether it was oral or whether it was just however it was it was a promise that is was talked it was said to her that she would go full time as soon as possible and i looked at the difference of the total budget the increase how much it would increase the total budget if she went from part time to full time including benefits it's 0.33, one third of 1% increase in the budget. I understand the idea of, oh, it's only here and it's there and it's the other place and it does add up. And I do think there are some places and I would like to keep on top of this as it goes on. There are some places that efficiency can be made, but it's not efficient to not have a full-time rec director. It's not it just makes no financial sense, let alone the sense that I'm talking about. That the building better children, building, helping adults who take advantage of this program, whole families, they're not foisting their kids off on these programs. They are taking advantage of it to help kids grow better and our community grow better. Uh, Julia Campania, um, Morristown. Um, thank you so much for the work that you've done since the last time we met. It sounds like um, you really did hear and respond. And I had the opportunity to talk to Tina, and she told me some very concrete things that you were able to implement uh, to cut back on the budget. So um, very much appreciative of that. There are two questions that I have that I would ask the board if they would consider going on record. And that would be, would the board be willing to commit to, in the next cycle, um, restructuring how across the board, and I realize some of the um, areas of wages are union, so that involves union negotiations, and some of them are non-union, but would the board consider looking at restructuring and implementing some stability so that we don't run into these peaks and troughs and we're at the mercy of a lot of outside influences incorporating some stability so not asking for hard and fast numbers or percentages but just saying on the record that you will commit to moving in that direction going forward the second thing i'm going to repeat my ask for because i've been entirely transparent publicly in my opposition to the first version of the budget and the second version of the budget and that is that i um in my clients and in my family i have vulnerable elderly and disabled people on fixed incomes that i feel like i need to advocate for and that would be would the board consider or speak to whether you could implement a moratorium on going to the extent of tax sale you could begin tax foreclosure proceedings but hold back off on tax sales for a year for any new filings that are in response to the situation that we're in now. And I realize it takes some Title 32 examination, but that would give our vulnerable people some reassurance that the board is committed to saying, if at all costs we can avoid going the length of tax sale, we would be willing to do it. And then lastly, one other creative idea um, would be that I wrote grants for years um, when I worked as a TA. And yes, it can supplement your budget. And if we 
are looking for cost savings and don't have funding in the budget to go full time to for a rec person now there's six months in the first half of the budget cycle that runs from July 1st 23 to June 30th 24 could the rec position go full time as of January 1 and between July 1 and December 31 this rec person can be looking for grant funding that could supplement their income and then we are really not out or behind the eight ball and we've implemented that position as a phased in full time position so just some thoughts but my my biggest one is would you please 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 commit to looking at leveling and refund restructuring and putting stability in and would you look at um, putting a moratorium on tax sales i'm going to address uh, part two mm -hmm. don would like to address part one part two i i just spoke with sarah today about your idea of is it article 32 or 30, title 32 title 32 so this is something that sarah has been thinking about for a while and and, and uh gathering data on, I believe. So I think that's a, something we can be looking at okay. for sure. Thank you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot and say, please come out, but yeah. that you're looking at it. So in regards to your first statement, yeah, I, I have no problem committing to this idea. It's something that this board has uh, tossed around for at least a month now. In fact, I had an email today and I'm looking up there at the Zoom board seeing if I can recognize the name, but I, I responded to this person, I said, absolutely we need to we need to look at how raises are being done in this town um we need to figure out a way to make it fair for our employees and get rid of the peaks and the troughs and the floors and the ceilings i i think that's what we've seen this year we all know this has been a very unusual year with the high inflation last right. year um but i so I, I would certainly commit to restructuring, restructuring the way that the way that's worded. Right now we have a we have a police contract that's going to be uh, it's still got uh, a year or two two more years on it. We have a uh, highway department that we need to negotiate, and we have as we've talked about many times non union. But I will reiterate, you know, it's it's a floor and a ceiling, so. There are years where um, there would be a minimum, and that minimum might be above CPI that year. And there'll be years where there's a ceiling, and the ceiling might be below CPI that, that year. But it needs to be it needs to be a fair across the board. And just so you know, what you're talking about is very similar to the way most of our educators are are funded in the state. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Thank you. Um, in terms of your second comment about the tax sale. Uh, I would uh, I would have to, to speak to my town clerk for a while and get some information on that. I'm not very versed on that, so I just kind of throw that out there. So it's hard for me to commit to that. But and I'm not sure if I prefaced it with only looking for like a finite commitment to do that in response to the circumstances. I'm not looking at a perpetuated period of time, and certainly not letting people off the hook who are already in the pipeline. It's just for these unusual circumstances. And your third one, but the rec director, I fear if we don't give her names on the floor tonight, yeah. if we don't give Anna Anna McCormick the uh, the full time job, she's she's going to leave. I mean, she's said that twice in this room that she's going to leave, and I I think it's you know um, Pat. Um, Pat talked about this, and uh, it's time to give her an opportunity to see. She spoke at the last meeting to see if she can bring in some. She's not going to bring in all one hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of grants. I know that that she talked about at the last meeting, but she can bring in some of those, and uh, she can probably, almost for certain, bring in enough grant money to cover the increase in her salary. I mean, she's already proven this year; she's brought in over twenty thousand dollars as a part-time individual. So. I just kind of throw that out there, but I appreciate what you're saying. Absolutely. We need to look at restructuring. Thank you. Thank and, you. And I would say um, I've, I've been pitching the restructuring um, because, again, this goes back to moving any, you know, uh, changing positions was that we, I think we need to get, before we do anything, is get some plan in place to keep everything stable because, again, you know, having worked in the corporate world, when people's salaries get too high, you have to cut them because you can no longer afford them. And that really is my goal is to not get in a situation where 
um, we have to let someone go because we can no longer afford it. And you know, keep in mind, again, this budget has been voted down twice. Um, so I'm totally in favor of that. I'm look I'm forward to Sarah uh, hearing more about this tax because I think um, it's there's a lot coming with um, the current situation uh, with the flood. So I I I think that I'm hoping to look for that. And um, what you mentioned was ex I had actually already spoke uh, I spoke to Jason about this is that um, because grants take a long time um, and that currently giving this I had recommended the same thing was having finding a way to uh, have, give Anna the time to write grants this winter so that we can get ahead of it um, and get some of the structuring in place. Um, so I, I'm in favor of that because um, again, it takes a lot of time and it's very hard to try to write grants when you're doing other things. Uh, and given what's currently going on with inflation and you know, again, our businesses have been shut down for a couple of days with water and uh, and they were already kind of hurting, but I, I would like to uh, see if we can find a way to do that. I, and if, hopefully we can work with her and um, because we, nobody expects her to write grants for free, um, but get us, get in front of it um, and fund it and go forward that way. Thank, so thank you. you very Julie, much. Julia, before you leave, um, it's been in discussion for a while now, the, the cap and, and floor of the, um, of the COLA. Um, so that's definitely on the board's radar, and I absolutely do support that. Um, okay. I think that we need to flatten the curve and so that it protects the municipality taxpayers as well as protects the uh, employees. It's going to be a negotiation, obviously, with three separate entities. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, um, I know that there's been some cursory uh, conversations among some non-union uh, employees that um, actually came to the board or came to the municipality uh, with a very similar idea. So um, I think everybody understands that these last two years have been extraordinary mm -hmm. and, and it cannot persist on either side of the ledger. Um, in terms of, of Anna's position, um, I think it should be pretty well known by now that I absolutely support her full-time residency. Um, I think the thing that we need to remember is that um, recreation grants um, come available not during the summertime, but late fall, early winter. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a process. I mean, grants can take you know a week Forty hours to put together and formalize and, and uh, submit, uh, even on a part-time basis. Um, you know the gap between income and expense this for, this past fiscal year was uh, forty-five thousand dollars, and she was able to cut that uh, down even on a part-time basis with grants and donations um, to twenty-three thousand. So even on a part-time basis, she was able to do that. Um, on a full-time basis in the programs that she wants to create and for both the young as well as the young at heart um, is uh, an opportunity, uh, particularly with a revenue that could be very well available because of the size of the amounts of the grants that are available, to be not only self-sufficient self and would be the only department in this municipality that would be, um, there's an opportunity to actually make money on recreation. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, she has the time and the energy and the knowledge. Um, this would be an asset that um, we can ill afford to lose. And uh, I very much support uh, the full time. Thank you. And I would just add that, um, as I'm sure the board knows, but I just like to state it publicly that the difficulties and the anger and the the struggle is fear driven people are fearful economically and now more so so any any bit that can be brought forth that says look we can reassure you because of this or the other or we're going to take whatever steps we can whether it's a moratorium or putting in place solid plans to stabilize things can go a long way to alleviating that fear reaction and that anger that comes with it and just getting this over the hurdle of getting it passed and we can 
kind of restabilize, hopefully, going forward. Thank you for your time. Sarah wants to speak oh. to one of your okay. questions. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Julia. Although I'm going to answer you, Julia, slightly. Um, these are discussions for another meeting, not budget, but just um, quickly, ha tax sales um, are based on a tax sale policy that the select board signs off on. So you have the power to decide, I will be bringing the first week in September, the list of, of September, um, August. September, September. Um, the list of um, delinquent taxpayers <laughs> and uh, asking your blessing to um, get the attorney to write a letter. You can say yes, you can say no. Um, you have this policy, so you have the power to change your policy um, in the timelines or add longer timelines if you want, you have that power. Um, I have been collecting for a number of years the part I, I'm perfectly honest and I've said it before, the part of my job that I hate the most is being delinquent tax collector. There's nothing I like about that job. Um, and selfishly, I have been collecting creative ideas that other communities uh, do. I know Stowe doesn't charge a penalty, they just charge a higher interest monthly. Um, Wolcott has a graduated. I know communities around us have moved away from how we um, bill interest and penalty. How we bill interest and penalty is state statute. So the voters can choose to change it uh, at an election, but if they don't change it, then you have to, you fall back to the statute. So I do have information I've been gathering for a while just because I hate getting yelled at. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so, um, I, I'm, if the board is interested, I'm happy to gather more information and bring it. It's just been sitting, good. sitting yes. in a folder. Perhaps Thank we can put that you, as sir. an agenda item Thank at you. some point. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to speak, sir? <clears throat> yeah, Jamie Jarrett. A couple things that I was thinking about there, and one is listening to all the chatter on or reading all the chatter on the front porch forum regarding the library or anything else. And that's exactly what it is. It's just chatter. It's, you know, the, the pen is mightier than the sword, correct? That's what we've always been taught. And the bottom line is people that I've spoken with, it's not that they're against the library. It's not that they're against money. It, they're against the budget itself. However, the budget is presented, it's all about the bottom line. And wherever the cuts need to be made is where the cuts need to be made. And that's entirely up to you guys, okay? Um, secondly, um, you guys have really walked into a mess. And let's face the reality for past select boards, we are where we are because of that. And we, the community, didn't get involved at that particular time. So we have to take some of the blame ourselves that we did not get involved. And lastly, when we talk about the police department, the fire department, and the EMS department, I can't think of one person that would be against supporting any one of those departments in this budget. And in fact, personally, when I look at the fire department and EMS department, that they deducted money from their budgets at such a small percentage of what their budget is, is was ridiculous. They shouldn't even have, there shouldn't even have been any cuts regardless of what they put in their budgets. So Jason, again, thank you. I wish the other departments, if I had the information that you had given me last week, I think if everybody here and everybody on Zoom had the same type of information to look at, we wouldn't be sitting here for all these weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's behind you. There's someone behind you, Tom. Oh, she was coming up. <laughs> My name is Allison Toole, and I'm a Morristown resident, and 
some of you know or may not know, but Don McDowell is my husband. He's a wonderful husband, by the way. Um, but he's been really busy lately, I can tell you that much. Um, but I am a Morristown resident, a taxpayer. I am my own person, and I have my own thoughts and words to say. And a lot of it's already been said, and um, Jason you know, said, his stuff about um, the police department, Laura um, talked about the EMS, the fire department has spoken. Um, and I think these are just really, really important, you know, important things to support. And I think a lot of people obviously do support all these things. Crime is big, and we know that, and drugs have had a really negative impact. And I think having another police officer um, that that can patrol where there's two people on duty at night is really important. I think safety and a sense of safety is right up there with um, our basic needs. Um, and the town employees, um, you know, the, we've been talking about pay and all that stuff. And, um, you know, Paula had talked about she's done an analysis and um, they're not getting overpaid. And, and it's not just about the pay either for the town employees. It's also the sense that the community, their employers is the community, support them and value them and, um, and are willing to um, you know, put their money where their mouth is. So um, you know, the other thing is we're a community and we have our own um, priorities. We have our own um, things that we're interested in, but we're a community and you know, your neighbor might be a young family and they, their kids go to the rec program and they utilize the library and you might need to call an ambulance some, and you pay taxes for that, right? And you don't use the library, you don't use the rec program, you don't have young kids, but you might have to call the ambulance someday. And your neighbor has paid for that service through their taxes. And I think it's important that, um, and it's not just, and ba basic services are really, really important, and I've just spoken to that, but it's also a, a community that's vibrant, that offers um, programs and things for people to do. and. And I'll say that I'm not just um, benevolent. I have selfish, um, selfish motivations. So someday I'm going to want to sell my house. Um, I'm going to want to downsize. And I want buyers. You know, I want buyers that want to come into this community. I don't know who they are. It might be a young family with young kids that want, you know, want a robust rec program, that want a library that offers, you know, great services, that want an excellent school system. Or it might be, you know, a couple that's relocating from the city and they want a place that where they feel safe. I don't know who those people are. So I feel a little bit like cut your nose off to spite your face comes to my mind quite a bit. And your house, if you don't replace the roof, if you don't update your um, your uh, your your furnace, you're, you're going to pay for it down the road. Um, and then also the one last thing is, and we talked about fear, and I think there is a lot of fear. And when we do have a new budget that is approved, and I really suggest people. Um, either utilize the online services um, calculators and if you're not comfortable with that go to the town clerk's office because they will help you out and so you have an informed decision you can see how this new budget really is going to affect your taxes and then then you have an informed decision that you can vote on and i think just listening to hearsay um, some of the online stuff it's not always accurate so get accurate information before you vote thank you, thank you. Uh, nobody can argue with, with that. My name is Tom Pudia, and nobody here has any arguments against your library. We love your library. The people that work at that library, they know I do. I'm in there all the time. It's, I think it's the best library in this state. And everybody, everybody wants, at least I'm not through. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you won't be, you won't be clapping in a bit. Well, and the rec department, everybody wants the rec department. We know that. The problem here is we're forgetting about, we're forgetting about this town, average salary is $5,400. There are people who can't afford it, who are going to lose their homes. 
it's sad that we're talking about we're talking about getting ways to stop foreclosures. It's a fact of life that's coming up. And it's just a horrible situation. And just because I argue against uh, salaries for somebody, it's not, a, I'm not against those people. I'm for the person who's going to have to pay for this. I'll give you, for instance, my biggest problem right now with this budget is $230,000 you took out of the emergency fund. That is money that could be used next year to pay for a lot of the stuff that we're going to have to be paying for. But it's going to end up on a big budget next year. And if you take that $230,000 off of it, this budget is up to 14.7%. Can I respond to that? No, not right now. Thank you, I appreciate letting me talk. And another thing I can't stand on this budget are these big salaries for the front office. And you just heard how fire department, what's worse, our EMS, our one out there, guy been working there for six, seven years, is less than $18 an hour. Where, where did they fall on? under the radar when everybody else was getting these big raises. $13,000 is in for one person is on this budget. Raise, just raise. $15,000 for one person is in this budget just for raise. $18 an hour for that EMS to go on out and save somebody's life. I'm all for you, Brett Poppin. I'm for, super for you for your library. But do you think that, that that woman that's working, trying getting paycheck to paycheck, is going to bed at night saying, well, thank God my town office worker got a $13,000 raise. I'm sure glad that my EMS got, is working for $18 an hour. You think she's feeling good? That's why I'm against this, this budget. And that's why you got to worry, because I do believe it's not going to pass again. And I'm going to tell you, for 130 years, this town has been incorporated. No budget has failed. And it's already failed twice. And you got a chance of having it fail three times, because all you listen to are the people who are gaining by this stuff. We're all for it. Can we afford it? It's on to you to make sure that we can. To make sure it can, it will pass. If not, if not, the Secretary of State, who I've talked to, has no idea what's going to happen because it's never happened before. It may. Thank you. Now you Paula Beatty, HR Director. I just want to touch on a couple of things. One, um, when we're thinking about a part-time position um, going to full-time, if Anna, and I don't really want to speak about her, but if that, position. if that position were, the person in that position were to step away, there's a cost of replacing that part-time person that doesn't really, that isn't thought about. You're advertising, you're looking at 1000 to $1,500. You're looking at a hiring committee. So you're paying the staff to do the interviews. There is an expense that that comes along with replacing individuals. But there's also we're in a time where it's very hard to find dedicated, qualified individuals, and we have one. And to there, you can't put, can't put a value on that. I also want to talk um, really quick about um, the comment that was made that a staff staff is making um, an $18,000 increase. If you do the math for a full-time person, that would be $8 an hour. Um, there has been no employee that has received an $8 or $6 per hour increase. 
I also want to talk about the general government really quickly. We talk about the police and the fire and the EMS, and I support them, and I appreciate what they provide. But the general government also supports those departments. If it wasn't for the general government staff, there would not be birth certificates, there would not be dog licenses, there would not be elections, there would not be payroll checks cut, there would not be bills paid. So there, we are a support staff, the general government, and without us, those other departments would not operate the way that they do and as efficiently as they do. So I think that that's really important to be paying attention to. We, we have a value as well as the general government. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I just um, want to revisit the um, what's been commonly called the emergency fund. It really isn't. It's an unallocated reserve fund. Um, and the article passed in March said that it cannot, cannot, shall not exceed the previous year's base operating budget. So currently that, that fund has about $890,000 in it. Um, the base budget that we're talking about is about $666,000. Leaves us about $240,000 of money that we cannot leave in that fund. And it's, and it's, it's a requirement based on voter, uh, uh, voter approval that we need to expend that money. And the best use of that, those funds, today is to take tax dollars that you've already paid and apply them to tax dollars that you're going to be expected to pay. It just lowers the bottom line of what um, you're going to be expected to pay come November 15th. It's, it's the best fiduciary responsibility that this board can show. It's prudent use of these funds to move forward and we require it to take it out of this fund. Um, so I, you know, say that every night and every day on front porch forum, but it's money that we need to move, in, and this is the best use right now to bring this down to a, a workable number. Um, at the end of the day, you know, there was a, there was some inference um, that unless we uh, were able to get this budget down to eight uh, percent, because that was the new target, um, that um, this wasn't going to pass. So with the savings that we've incorporated and still preserving services that this community provides every day and night, we got this down to 9.9% and with the growth in the grand list at the end of the day, because this all counts, um, it's going to be uh, under eight. And I guess my, my you know, I, I get um, the fear factor here. But the other fear factor is, is that if we can't move this community forward, where are we gonna be? Because you cannot burn this house down and expect anything is gonna grow out of the ashes. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope I'm, I'm not trying to come across as being too preachy here, but it's been a little frustrating um, over the last four months that I've witnessed that you know, we have such potential here and, and we're down to a bottom line, which is basically level funding from the previous year. And, and what are we gonna have left if we turn this thing down? You know, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's shameful, honestly. And, I, and I, get, I get where people are coming from. Um, I think that we've done a, a, a reasonably good job of, of listening to the public and, and trying to balance the needs and wants of everybody here. But um, we need to we need to vote this, and if you really feel strongly, however you want to vote, you need to bring your friends, your neighbors, your family. Vote early, vote often, and, <laughs> and, and 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 bring it to the table because the majority of the of the voters in this community need to have their voice heard, and your voice is your vote. So that that would be my end game here. We're not done talking about the budget. Um, there's other things that are on my stuff to do list and we're going to hopefully sign a uh, warning on July 24th. We've been another week, uh, over a week to talk about this. Um, but at this point, I think that this represents a very um, stable and reasonable budget. It doesn't do the things that it should do, but it gets us to move forward. Thank you.
Dennis Tigagurio, Marsville taxpayer. I have every right, you know, people, I disagree with people in this room. I agree with people in this room. I'm done listening about cutting this budget. This is one third of your tax bill. The school budget's two thirds. Huh, went through without a problem. Water and light just increased their rates at least 14%. Went through without a problem. I had to go because I got guests at my firehouse in case we get flooded again. I get a swift water rescue team from North Carolina. So I'm heading there, but that's all I want to say. We've been arguing for months over a third of your property tax. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, this will be probably the last time you hear me until the budget is done because i'm not coming back you know my name i know but it's not for me it's for the the people on the zoom that's tony cody cody hill taxpayer very disappointed because you people don't listen you haven't took one idea and i'm going to say it again because chris you keep on saying thirty dollars thirty dollars thirty dollars do you not how many thirty dollars do you think we have I simply am offering you information on what was proposed to what you actually save in actual tax dollars. If you don't want to hear that message, that's okay. Well, I'm, a, I'm a spectator. I got to hear it. But they're, they're, this is reality. Yeah. Then that's all I'm sharing. You can take that information and do with it what you want, but it's factual, it's accurate, and it's germane to the conversation. My reality is I'm, my taxes are going up per Sarah Haskins thing on front porch for him, $2,013. That's with the school tax. Don't say no, I already did the math. So whoever said Tony, no, you're wrong. Tony, 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 to the Tony just right here, thanks. That's what it is. And I'll challenge anybody to it, because I did the math. $2,013. So you tell me how a retired person is going to pay for that. I'm going to pay for it because I'm staying where I live. There's a lot of people that can't afford it. Many, many, many people. Think about it. And it's not the budget. It's how you guys are making the budget. It's not the 8% is not affordable. 10% is not affordable. It's how, it's, it's how it is. This young lady right here just said, Tom said $18,000. He never said eighteen thousand dollars. He said thirteen thousand okay. dollars. So that's a lot. That, there's so a big difference. What, Tony, Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Have no fear. I'm not coming back until after the budget. Okay. I really hope it don't pass because it's not. It's not feasible. Does anybody else have anything? Um, I'm going to have this gentleman. He hasn't spoken yet. Yes. My name is Jan Paris. Uh, our family's lived here since 1967, so we've paid a lot of taxes here in town. Um, the one thing that I'd like to say is that it seems like not you folks on the board, but previous boards have done this town a huge disservice by expanding all of these programs. And so now that the town is almost operating as if uh, a working person that's working week to week and can't go to the grocery store until they get paid on Friday afternoon. And that's where we're at. We've, we're just spending too much money on all of this stuff. And I love the library as well, so don't, please don't knife me in the back. But look, some of these programs have to be slimmed down. I'm not saying they have to be eliminated, but they have to be minimized to some extent so that we have more money for some other things. One of my pet peeves, again, is the road, as Don and, and Chris will know, we're not doing a, a service to any of our highway department people because we're not paving any of the highways. And again, the previous board didn't properly spend the money to keep the roads in good condition. And so now they've deteriorated to the point and now we're not gonna maintain them again. And so talk about kicking the can down the proverbial road, that's exactly what's happening to our highway department. And so that's kind of bad. The police chief here, 
he needs another person because there's so many nut jobs out there that need his services that you know we have to protect ourselves and then the ems i don't know how the previous board members could ever allow the ems to operate and let these people's wages get to this extent i mean this is just lunacy so that's all i'm trying to say i'm i'm not pro or against the budget but i'm just saying that from my standpoint, it's not you folks, it's the previous people that are gone, but it's up to you folks to fix it now. And I know that's a huge task. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I just wanna say, I hope he's listening too, but a huge shout out to our, our sorry, our previous town administrator, because he identified all the things you just talked about, plus many more that went into the very first budget. And I'll remind everyone once again, I, I was on record, that was a huge budget. It was gigantic. But what Eric Dodge did was he looked at EMS and he realized there was a big problem there. And he looked at the programs in this town that, were, that didn't exist, recreation being, being one worthy of being pointed out. Looked at the roads worked his back end off to get the Duhamel pit opened up, which we're still waiting on a permit for. Unfortunately, the storm knocked out our court hearing this week. So we can really get going on it. You know, I was talking to Kevin today. What was it? One inch of gravel is 70,000 yards. We just need so much of this stuff, you know, and but you're absolutely right. You know, it, it, I'm not pointing the finger. I, I just want to applaud him. It saddens me that he's not here, but that's another story. But you're, you're right. I mean, these are things that we need to get a handle on. In my mind, there's just nowhere else to go in this budget. And, you know, I can't believe Tina and Stacy's not here right now, but I can't believe you guys are actually able to get the money that you, you did get for us. But there's nowhere else to go. It's the bottom of the barrel now. And it is time, you're right, Chris, it's time for us to come together. It's time, time to start mending wounds. There's been a lot said, it's gonna take a while. When this budget passes, I hope. It's, uh, we're not, uh, you know, the next week, it's not gonna be a rosy, rosy situation. I understand that. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take months, may take years may take a brand new board. Four of us may not be here before this is all ironed over. Um, but I, I, I appreciate what you've said, and, but there's nowhere else to go. We, it's, we've already slashed and burned this thing. You know, I've talked to Kevin a lot, and I know the highway department is very concerned that all the work that they have to do and the equipment they don't have to do it with and the money they don't have to do it with do it with. And I've talked to our foreman and they're, they're frustrated that, you know, the community is constantly asking them to improve this, change this, do this. And uh, we've taken a lot of money. We've taken $700,000 away from one department. That's a lot. I know you want that road paved up there. Um, and we've cut $200,000 in paving, but I'm repeating myself, but thank you. I resigned myself to just driving around the holes now for quite some time, so don't feel bad. Yeah, it's called traffic calming. Carrie Hansi, Morristown. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak again. Um, I was so excited to be behind the mic. I forgot all my awesome facts about REC, but I'm not going to bore you about that now because <laughs> I have lots of um, good resources about why REC matters. But I did want to just speak to what everybody else has just been saying right now in these last couple minutes. Um, I have a three generation household, um, so I do live with someone on a fixed income and we manage all of that together. Um, and so I applaud you for your opening statements today and for getting this budget to a place that I hope that the entire community is now ready to get behind and support so that we can move on and start doing really good things here in Morristown. Thank you. So Tommy VT on uh, Zoom. Yes, I'd just like to- Could you uh, introduce yourself, Tom, please? My name is Nancy Donovan. And I would just like to applaud Laura 
for bringing up, let's just take a minute. Let's take a minute and plan. The unplanning that has happened prior to this particular board is why we're dealing with the issues that we are right now. Let's get a professional in to look at the situation of where we are, where we're going. Let's take a moment to plan. They tell you anytime that you have to make a decision uh, pushed, you know, uh, about a decision, that should be a red flag. We need to take a moment and consider where this money's coming from. Uh, a lot of people can't afford this budget. There are a lot of older people. And I applaud the library. The MS, I think, should be making much more money. But we need to stop and look at where we're going and where we're trying to go and cut all the excess spending. We would all love all the things in life, but we have to live within a budget and Morristown is no exception. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Go ahead. I just wanna make sure that I heard correctly that if we, oh, Christy Snip, if we pass this budget, the EMS people will go from the $3 an hour to 15, right? So it's important to pass the budget if you care about what we're paying our employees. That's number one. Number two, um, I fully support the rec full-time position and the library, I've said that before, because I think that they work in conjunction with the police department, which I've also said before. So. If you are going to cut library funding and you know keep the rec position at part time you're going to be hiring more police officers so it's not going to really be a savings in the end, and I really hope that people will get behind this budget, it has been hacked to death at this point, and you know we need to move forward, we need to be a community, we need to get behind this, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Henry on Zoom, could you introduce yourself, please? My name is Henry Hamill. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, when, when you're talking about the budget increase, the percentage of, of what the budget's going to increase or go down to, um, I think what matters to the voters, and I've heard it that you can't voters might not be able to or can't afford what's been proposed as the increase. It's totally unclear to me. Well, I say I say it's totally unclear. It's not necessarily totally unclear, but it's vague as to what that means to me in terms of what the cost is going to be increased from what I'm paying for my taxes now. And I think it's important that if you, if we as a group, all of us, expect to have a positive outcome somewhere along or somehow, it needs to get out in a public way what that percentage actually rolls out to in terms of a budget increase. What does that mean as a taxpayer to my taxes, um, you go a long way at getting some um, support behind that effort if you put it out there in words that people can understand and uh, believe. I, I'm done. I, okay, thank you. So Henry, um, we have an expert sitting in our, um, our midst, Sarah. Haskins, our town clerk, and she said, if you call her, she can help you figure that out. Sure. Did you get, did you hear that? Yes, I did hear that. But does Sarah want to be inundated by how many voters are in the town? 5,000, something like that. People trying to get at what it is. Uh, there, that's going to mean for their taxes. She she just said that's what you pay her for. But I think we're going to be able to put something on the website so people can at least have a rough estimate of what their taxes are going to be. 
once once we determine that uh, what the uh, our, our budget is going to be we haven't had that determination yet so we we can't give you that information until we do that and that should be coming out by the 24th of July All that right, we'll have it we'll have it set and then you can I, talk to Sarah what I what I sort of heard from if I draw between the lines here you're already talking about approving a nine point something percent increase, which you think will might sugar off to be somewhere in the eight percent, given the the town the list, the grand so, list. Yeah, so I think you already know. We already know the answer. It's just a matter of a formality. Well, be and also be aware that your municipal taxes are only forty percent of the taxes you'll be paying. The other sixty percent come from the uh, the school taxes i get that okay but, but it still means i want to know before i vote on the budget right what that percentage impact is to me and that alone when you're all done when the vote gets cast that's what's going to make a decision from the voters point of view about whether they say yay or nay and we're either going to be happy about that it increased that it got passed, or we're going to be back here with frowns on our faces discussing this whole thing all over again. Yes. So a question, uh, Tina. You know, as we had done on the previous uh, budget um, outlay, and what we've done on uh, different metrics on the library and rec. Um, we would be able, you would be able to, based on uh, whatever we sign as a as a warning uh, on the 24th, be able to target those different appraised values and what that tax rate will reflect on in terms of. If you were, uh, if you look at the pages here, yeah, the top section right there is what that 9.9 percent equates to by by house value so if you don't change the budget between now and when you sign it this information here is valid okay how about sharing that information now that you have it in front of you well we we just did this two days ago but we can put it on the website yeah I think did you, would... do you hear that henry yes i'm looking for you guys to support your position so that people can get behind you instead of yelling at you and being upset with you for doing something that they feel is not correct. Right. This will be up, it'll be on the website. You need to advocate for yourselves. You think that's and safe, therefore, right? and therefore and therefore advocate for the rest of us. Point well taken. Yes. Um, I just wanted to add Steph Hoffman with the library. Um, the la after I left last week's meeting, I talked to our director at the library about this exact issue and people's ability to both use the computer and figure out the calculators, which are extremely helpful because it's not a rough estimate. It's pretty much the number. Um, and I believe Sarah is working, as she mentioned earlier, on a calculator that combines both elements and, most importantly, the homestead prebate. So folks that are experiencing a discount for that, that needs to be factored in, especially folks that are considered low income, um, whether fixed or otherwise, can know all of that information in one place. And so our library is partnering with the town to offer assistance in this regard. After July 24th, we'll be advertising it. We have computers. If you don't know how to use them, come in. We can help you. We're going to have the information all in one place. And if you, I believe wholeheartedly in what Henry's talking about, people need to understand their own experienced impact from this so you can vote in a real way, in an educated real way. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Sarah Haskins. Yes, Kendra from the library and I have spoke and I'm going to help train Kendra to help um, how to use it so that they can help people that go in the library so that there's more people using it. Um, and also Steph mentioned the homestead. Everybody should have gotten your letters, I hope, from the state if you're going to get um, a prebate or not. If not, 
I have those numbers. If you have questions, I am only allowed to give it to the person that's it, it's not public information that's on the tax bill. So you would actually have to come in to get that number so that I can verify that you are that. But um, but people should have gotten their letters from the state regarding those. Thank you, Sarah. Jason. Jason Luno, Police Chief. Just got a couple quick things. I know it's late. Uh, we've heard a lot of support uh, and kind words tonight about our emergency services, whether it's police, fire, EMS, and that speaks volumes. Um, I know the other two chiefs aren't here right now, but I'm sure they would agree with me that it just shows what kind of a great community that we do have. I think it's important to note that all three of those departments, fire, police, and EMS, couldn't function without a support system that we have. We don't pay our bills. We don't do the payroll. We don't deal with HR problems. You know, there's a lot the finance office does for us. Judy does a lot for us. The zoning, literally everybody in this building, town clerk's office, our community development coordinator, we speak all the time, and then Anna with our rec. You know, I feel that our rec program is an important part of our community. Taking care of our youth is, is something we need to be uh, to, to consider very serious uh, and having a structured environment for our youth to spend during the summer when they're in school. And as Anna has spoken before, she's also looking into programs when you're out, not just during the summer. So we keep hearing summer rec, but it's really not just summer rec, it's, it's all four seasons. So I do feel and you know we deal with the youth as well and a lot of times it's youth that are in some type of crisis so seeing these types of programs it's really important to our community i feel and you know i hope this budget passes this time um, and we can move forward as a community as a department head i feel like i'm sitting in the middle of the road and neutral and just going nowhere and you know we have programs uh, like within the PD of how we can go out and do things to help combat the drug problem, you know, more vehicle work, but you know, that stuff, I'm not like want to go out and spend extra money right now because I don't even have a budget. So really as a community, I really hope this can make it through, uh, in December and we can move on and December. this September, okay. September <laughs> in December, we'll be planning our budget for next year. So. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you. Tina Sweet, Finance Director. Um, I just want to let everybody know what a terrific job our highway department has done in conjunction with the police, fire, and EMS for this FEMA event. Granted, we only had a few roads, but they knew exactly what to do. They didn't need any guidance from anybody. Kevin and I will put the paperwork together, we'll submit it, and it went very, very smoothly. And I don't think people necessarily appreciate that. So I wanted to just say that Kevin and his guys did a wonderful job, and so did the highway, the police, EMS, and fire. They all worked well together. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. So, T, what do you need from us, Sarah, tonight? Do you need anything from us? Do you need to have for us to vote on this budget tonight? Or is this, we can't wait till the 24th? It's either. Oh, you can't, um, because you, if you. Um, I, I think it would be best to put it on the morning. That was the 17th. So then it will actually. Okay, I'm just, I'm just. So you want to add it to the agenda on the 17th? I'm just wondering if that's possible. Not only, I know it's possible to put on the agenda, but I'm just wondering, given the time frame of that business meeting, and to just to let some people know, um, on Monday, um, we're going to start our meeting at 530. And then we have an executive session at 6 or 615 that we because we're meeting with a lawyer, we have to do it with time when that person's available, then we'll come back to another business meeting. So I just, I just wonder about the logistics of that. But if we can do it that way, and it, it does affect the public because they have to wait for us to come out of executive session, unless we can 
I, I don't think we're going to get through all our business before executive session. No, maybe, maybe we will, but I think we got like seven things on the agenda right, right. now. So it depends on how late you, you all want to be here. We, we, we currently have a meeting scheduled for the 20th. Is that right? Um, it's a tentative, we, we uh, today. a tentative budget. Yeah. We were going to meet. So I guess, each week. It, you know, all things being equal, um, we still have some other things that I'd like to chat about at some point here. Um, if we could um, get through Monday's meeting and the agenda that we already need to do in the executive session, um, answer any other questions, um, and look at the 20th at a, as a potential date to sign a warning, would that still meet your, your timeline, Sarah? Um, you need to sign the warning on the 24th yeah. um it could if you're not able to to pass it before then you could potentially do it on the 24th um and the packet there would just be x's on the warning for the budget and we would need to have you would make the motion we'd have to pause and i'd have to go type up the warning for you to actually sign but you could in essence do it all that night okay so 24th i'm not going to be here i'm going to be out of state you're not going to be on the 20th yes right but you need signatures on the warning yeah um so let's try to do it on the 17th so uh, let me just let you know the meeting room is not available on the 20th okay. um we there's already a meeting scheduled in here uh for conservation uh i don't know if they can meet upstairs i'm not sure how big i can talk with them uh the 19th is not available either i've got a meeting in here already um and Tuesday the 18th, we could do here because Todd is up to the country club on with his meetings. So Tuesday or the 21st. Are you here, Judy, on the 21st, Tuesday? Tuesday would be the, the 18th. 18th. Were you, are you I here? Can be here on the 18th. I, I would suggest we're going to be here on the 17th. Yep, I think we should do it the 17th. It's going to be a long meeting, but. Okay. Bring no, your sleeping bag. A long bag. meeting might be better than two meetings. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, let's let's aim for the seven. Okay. Bring we'll your add budget discussion on to that. Bring your pillows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I, I'm just so that you all know, I am next week at the New England Clerks Academy for the week at a training a week out of state. I'm not here, but I don't think you need me. It's okay. okay. Yes, we do. We <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm working. You can call me. <laughs> it's like, ah, thank you. All right. Yeah. So, like, the entertain a motion. Okay. I would make a motion to adjourn. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.